Hey guys, and welcome to episode 148 of the OCDstories.com podcast. Now, in this episode, I interview Kim Vincenti. Kim is Vice President of OCD Jacksonville, which is an ISDF affiliate. And in this show, I got on to talk about her experiences as being a parent of someone with OCD. So her son has OCD and uh, she shares you know, her story as, as being a parent um, of someone with OCD and uh, you know, her experiences of, of trying to help him get the right treatment and that, all that process. It's, it's really interesting. Whether you're a parent or not, I think you're going to enjoy this uh, She's very easy to listen to. She's a really nice person. Um, I had the privilege of meeting her in America. Um, yeah, and it was nice to get to know her there. So I wanted to get her on to share her experience as being a parent because I know there are many parents that listen to this podcast, I should say. So some of the stuff we talk about is obviously her story, um, kind of questions around family support. So, you know, advice for parents of a newly diagnosed child. And when I say child, I mean kind of up to the age of 18. Uh, advice for self-care for the parent you know looking after yourself because it can be tough and how a family can fight OCD together we go into many more questions around this topic we then talk a bit about OCD Jacksonville and the work she's she's doing there and then we talk about um, a brand called Natural Life in in the states and uh, she worked alongside them to create a range called Fearless which is a load of t-shirts it's a load of notebooks you know, air fresheners, stickers, you name it. Uh, There's a lot of cool designs, but a lot of them have uh, inspirational quotes or meaningful quotes on them. And the idea is A, for people who decide to buy it to kind of uplift their spirit, but also a percentage of the profits goes to OCD Jacksonville to help fund their activity. So whenever someone buys anything, um, OCD Jacksonville benefit from it. So that was kind of why she worked with them to achieve this. So I think it's a great it's a great model of uh, how a charity is getting more money from a, a big brand uh, by doing something entrepreneurial, and I really like that. Um, then we just uh, discuss so many more topics in this one. It was great to chat with Kim. Uh, she's very inspirational, and as I said, whether you're a parent or not, uh, someone with OCD or you're someone with OCD, I think you'll enjoy this one. Uh, I certainly did. And always, if this podcast has helped you in any way and you and you enjoy it. Please, if you get time, leave a review on whatever podcast app you use. Uh, it helps me reach more people, and it means a lot to me to see your feedback. So uh, without further ado, here is Kim. On the podcast today, I have Kim Vincenti. Kim is Vice President of OCD Jacksonville, an ISDF affiliate. She has worked alongside the clothing brand Natural Life to create the Fearless Collection, a range of products to target stigma and fear of anxiety disorders as well as raise money for OCD Jacksonville. Welcome to the show, Kim. Good afternoon. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it is good to have you here. And obviously, we met at the ISDF conference. Yeah, that was fun to see you. And I went running over, very yeah. <laughs> excited to meet the guy I've listened to for so long. Uh, thank, well, thank you for listening and uh, and for running over. Uh, it flattered me. So, yeah. Um, so we're obviously going to talk about the the fearless range and natural life um, in a bit, as I, I introduced at the start, and the cool stuff you're doing, which you had on display at the conference. Um, but, I, but first, you know, you listen to the show, you know, I always get people's OCD stories. Um, kind of, what's your relationship with OCD, and what's kind of the story there? Well, my son was diagnosed when he was about 10 years old, and right away I decided two things, that he was not going down under my watch, Mm -hmm. and that knowledge was going to be power. My dad was a medical researcher, and I just said, I am going to learn everything I need to know about this. So, you know, many sleepless nights, and um, I gathered a fair amount of information to know right away that I needed an ERP practitioner something that I found out down the line um, other families aren't so lucky to get. But it led me right to um, one of the the greatest um, ERP practitioners in our town. And she was incredible with my son. However, his OCD was particularly nasty. And so um, at one juncture, she sent him off to... um, Uh, intensive under Dr. Eric Storch. And we were lucky to go to intensive a number of times under Dr. Storch and his um, group of clinicians. And 
just got the best care um, possible, and I'm still a huge proponent of intensive to um, handle OCD. Okay. Um, you know, and I knew OCD was not linear, the healing isn't linear, and that we were in for a journey, so yeah. just put on my seatbelt and got ready. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's a good point. You're right, it isn't linear. Uh, it's very, yeah, up and down. Um, so yeah, how's your son doing now? He's incredible. He's my hero. He just has um, fought this thing, and he lives a huge, full life. Nice. He has OCD, but um, he's he's learned all the tricks. He knows what to do, and he fights for his happiness and his life, and I couldn't be prouder of him. Yeah, excellent. That's inspiring. And obviously, credit to you for the work you put in. Well, I think he's a little proud of his mama. He's he's <laughs> awfully good to me, I can tell you that. <laughs> okay, good. Good to hear it. Uh, okay, so you run a, a family support group in yeah, Jacksonville? Um, so a number of years ago, I um, had a series of terrible diagnoses and um, was sick for a number of years, and I decided I better maybe start my bucket list. And um, in addition to that, I thought the healthiest thing for me would to be taking the focus off of me and onto other people. And I had always been the go-to mom for all things OCD in our town. I just like the mom network had people calling me constantly. So um, I decided, well, maybe I should make this a formal thing. And with the encouragement of my son's um, therapist here in town, I started this family support group. You know, because I was seeing time after time families coming and saying their kids are going to therapy, but they're not getting any better. And why is that? Mm. And it turns out they've never heard the word ERP and that there are all these therapists out there that don't know what they don't know. Mm. <laughs> and so I just decided let's um, start a group where I can help families, number one, find the right resources. But number two, talk about what ERP looks like in the home. Um, you know, because loving somebody with OCD is counterintuitive. All the things that you want to do, you want to reassure, you want to help, you want to indulge, you want to comfort. And really, that's keeping them sick. It's not, it's not an easy thing to do. But um, I thought if we could talk about that, you know, monthly with a bunch of parents that were going through the same things, maybe they would see some some changes in their homes. Yeah, yeah, really good point. How long has that been going on for? Um, so I've been leading that support group for, I think, seven years now. Wow, yeah. And, and that... it's been incredible. It's been incredible. I've met the most amazing, courageous families. You know, when their kids were... Um, too sick to to really cope, um, and they knew they had to go to intensive, but they didn't have the money. They did GoFundMe pages. They asked for caseworkers from the insurance companies. They fought for their kids, and that's what's great is we can all band together as parents and say we're not going to let these kids fall. We're going to find ways for them to get better. Um, I've had also very angry parents, parents that have just been beaten up by the OCD in their home. Mm. I had one dad once that actually kind of scared me, but um, I knew I knew that place of pain he was at. It, yeah. It's ugly. It's ugly what OCD can do, and it's it, it can take your kid away for a period, and it and it breaks your heart as a parent, yeah, or as a husband, or as a boyfriend, or whoever the loved one is, yeah. Yeah, no, really good point. Um, and I guess I got some questions around kind of some, some common things that come up in the support group because um, I get a lot of sort of parents listening and family members, siblings, etc., to the podcast. So it'd be good to, to get some information for them. Um, but a side note, so anyone who, because I, I, I've, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of them, but I, I'm familiar with a family support group in New York um, and... And I think they're wonderful. Uh, obviously, support groups generally are wonderful, but I think the, the the impact OCD can have on a family is sometimes understated, and these support groups are very necessary. So, long-winded question, but um, what advice do you have for anyone who wishes to start a family support group in their area or country? 
I think it's important that you know what you're talking about and that um, ERP should be the word of the day. Um, that, um, that for families in particular, um, unlike peer-to-peer support groups um, of, for sufferers, um, families need information and, and they're coming to you for information. So have the information at hand. I try to um, keep up on things. Like if I've got a family that's got a kid with harm OCD, I'd like to be able to say, oh, John Hirschfeld just had a new um, book come out about harm. Or um, Jonathan Abramowitz has got a great self-help book called Getting Over OCD. Why don't you try it? Um, I also have... um, literally all the gigabytes in my computer taken up because I've created files over the years. And if somebody's got a kid with scrupulosity, I've got, you know, 20 good articles on scrupulosity that I can send them. So when a parent calls me for the first time, I can kind of hit them with data about whatever that spectrum of OCD is. So they start understanding it before they even come to, to group so that, that, you know, it, can you ask the right questions yeah yeah really good point that's that whole uh, knowledge is power philosophy exactly yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I keep that one close to my heart too um okay so um i guess so you started talking about some of the things that come up with, within the family support group uh, but what are some of the core themes or the most commonly asked questions i guess um They'll just, a parent will describe something and say, is that an OCD thing? Mm. And, um, you know, if, if you can identify it as such, they, they need to know that. And, and it usually is, um, but you know, some of the things that's really cool is another family will be talking about what their kid's doing and they'll say, oh my gosh, that's an OCD thing. My kid does that too. And they'll, they'll start learning that, you know, the, the OCD thing is like an onion. You got to peel back the layers and there's lots of stuff going on beneath, you know, the surface. And, um, it's, it's informative to them and then they know what to look for or, or they know to expect that OCD is going to change up because it always does, you know, and yeah. that there's somebody saying that, okay, just because you beat that doesn't mean OCD isn't going to try to get you over here. And so, you know, we talk through those things that just commonly happen in the day of in the life of an OCD sufferer and his or her family. Mm. Yeah, good point. Uh, okay, so... Another thing we talk about is like, um, especially with the people with adolescent um, OCD sufferers is just the outbursts and the anger and, um, you know, and what should I do about this behavior or what should I do about that behavior? And I think maybe the, the line that I use the most is that the character issues are non-negotiable. If you're just because your kid has OCD doesn't mean he's allowed to yell at you, cuss at you, talk back. He doesn't get to drop out of school or, you know, or, or, you know, break the law or anything else. You know, yes, he has he or she has OCD, but, you know, you're also raising a decent human being. And to try to keep those those parameters in place um, and in dealing with the OCD. Yeah. yeah that's a really good point yeah yeah a tough one but a really good point um okay so let's say um a mum or dad has has uh they've come to you and they've asked for advice because they've just found out their son's just been diagnosed with uh, ocd um kind of what would you bear in mind let's say that's all the information you have and they just look at some general advice kind of where would you start well i i you know try to explain to them that you know there's There's OCD is treated best, you know, with uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, ERP in particular, and that you need to get to a therapist competent in ERP therapy. Um, It's really the only thing that works. And then, you know, down the line, let's augment with 
um, inhibitory learning. Let's augment with ACT. Let's augment with uh, mindfulness. But, you know, entry level, everybody should be hearing the word ERP. Mm -hmm. And if they haven't heard it yet, they need to get to that practitioner that knows it. Yeah. So that's always the first thing. Every everybody that walks in the door needs to hear ERP the first time. So. Yeah, no, good point. Um, and this this one I thought was important is um, what advice do you have for self care of the parents? So you know, you when when your son was say at his worst, that's obviously very demanding on you as well emotionally. Seeing your loved one suffer, how do you kind of protect yourself? and look after yourself in those times? Well, I mean, it's just like when you board an airplane, put on the oxygen mask first, because mm. it's going to be a long haul most of the time. <laughs> and so, you know, if you're not sleeping, you got to get some sleep. Mm. If, um, if you feel like you're just going to explode, you better walk away and go to your room and take a shower or a bath mm. and read a book. Um, and, and so you can cope the next day. Um, you know, certainly learning is helpful. And I do believe, you know, in my deepest place that, that being with others that are going through the same thing mm. is, is comforting in, in many ways. And, and what you learn, um, in those environments, um, is helpful. Um, you know, it, it's so important for the family or the loved one to know what this therapy is and what it looks like because you're going to have to walk it out for a good amount of time with your loved one that's suffering. So, um, you know, just, you know, in addition to knowledge is power, knowledge is comfort, I mm -hmm. think, because you know, it's not, there's, there's plenty of, of, incredible programs out there. There's plenty of, um, you know, good medicines. There's, you know, what, what people tend to think is that, oh my gosh, we're on a sinking ship and we're going down, but you need to be encouraged that there's so many healing options out there and that you are going to get better. It's just maybe going to take some time. Yeah. 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 I like it. Um, Okay, so um, you must be familiar with the Unstuck guys, the documentary Unstuck. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they've, I think they've got it in one of their T-shirts when they came on the podcast before. They said, uh, I think it's a family that f fights OC together, OCD together, stays together, or something like that. I'm probably butchering that. Um, yeah, I know it to be though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess any words of wisdom how a family can fight OCD together. Well, I think everybody needs to be on the same page. You can't have um, mom and dad learning about ERP, but your brothers and sisters are still opening the doorknob for you or you know, things like yeah. that. Um, we one, one night we had, you know, two sisters, a brother, mom and dad come, you know, as a united front, ju just so everybody knew what to do when they got home, um, it, which was a beautiful thing. Like everybody in the family was into it. Um, you know, I... Uh, my daughter's um, now husband was, you know, just her high school boyfriend, and he was in the game early days, I mean, with our son, and he's still, like, just incredible with my son, and, and they're, they're great buddies, too, you know, they yeah. You know, we went through this journey together, like with any difficult thing, when you go through a journey together, that that has some some landmines and you know um, boulders in the way you know you feel victorious when you got through it together yeah yeah really good point and uh and i remember what the quote was it's um when a family fights ocd together they beat ocd together yeah that's yeah. all right that, that's, that's but yeah um uh, okay no i like that so next question is kind of what was the biggest epiphany for you in your son's recovery um, that I couldn't will it to be so. Okay. Um, yeah, that just because I wanted him to be well, he had to do the he had to do the hardest work. Yeah. He had to be um, ready to fight for it himself, yeah. and it didn't matter how hard I was fighting to find the right you know interventions, mm -hmm. or the right therapist, or the right medicine, or anything else. He had to be. Um, the strongest player in the game. And, 
And and that was painful for me because I'm a fixer. I like to fix things, <laughs> and I I couldn't just fix them. So yeah. it was humbling and good for me because I learned so much, and um, and it's it's bonded us in ways that I could never imagine because. Um, I watched him do what he needed to do, and it's made me prouder than anything I can express. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I can't imagine how tough it is to kind of, like you said, know that you can't do anything more than you're doing to help your right. your son or daughter. Um, and as a parent, I can imagine that's incredibly horrible to feel that. Um, yeah. But I guess, in a way, almost liberating down the line is you've now seen your son find his own strength and do the work. And, and yeah. yeah, one thing that was really interesting, though, is um, when my son first went to intensive, the very first round, he basically failed. And I remember sitting in Dr. Storch's office. And I was crying, and I, how could this be? And um, he said, you know what? He's going to get better. We're just going to stay at this and get longer. He said, yeah, and here's one of the reasons I know why. He said, you and your husband are in the game. Mm -hmm. You're going you're gonna to keep with it, and you're going to make sure your son gets better. It's the families that just drop them off and say, here, fix them. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the kids that... that you know, struggle a lot more. So I did see that there's value in, in how the parents handle it and how the family handles it, but it, we can't do it all. You know, we can't do it all. Um, and in our case, our son had to buckle down and want to fight a little bit harder. Yeah. No, after absolutely. The first yeah. 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 Um, no, so, and, um, okay. So what was the biggest roadblock in your son's recovery and how did you overcome it? You or him? You know, I don't know. And, and again, it, you know, his OCD is his story to tell. Um, I would just say, you know, for sure, being a high school or a middle school person with um, OCD, there, I mean, especially back in those days, there is stigma. I think mm. it's better, most certainly. But um, just dealing with the misinformation of the people around you was very difficult. Yeah. Um, that I would say that was one of the most frustrating things for me. I mean, he may um, say something different. Um, I think, you know, specifics to his exposures or something like it might have been the most difficult. But for me, watching um, people not understand yeah. was painful. Yeah. Okay. And how did, how did you kind of deal with that stigma? Was it something he was bringing up at home or was it just something you noticed? Yeah, some, some, oh, well, I, you know, I, um, I did it, started doing a lot of volunteering at school <laughs> <laughs> and giving the evil eye to the evil kids. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, uh, in, in, it, it prag pragmatically though, what I did was, um, there was a great article, you know, you got to remember this is 15 years ago, but there was a great article in Time magazine called um, When Worry Hijacks the Brain, and mm -hmm. it was about OCD. And so every semester, every teacher that he had, I sent that article to so yeah. that they knew, they knew, you know, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. and, and most teachers in those days did not know it. They hadn't seen it. They, they they just thought maybe, you know, maybe he's, he's crazy or maybe he's defiant or maybe he's this or that. Um, but I found that informing the school and, and, and it, the teachers in particular was extraordinarily helpful. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. P often people, I mean, kids, kids will find anything to be mean sometimes, but adults at least will, they, they, they don't, and to be honest, probably most kids don't want to be, mean or judgmental but they just don't have the information right so right. you you sending that that article to the teachers was yeah you helped correct them and give them the information in which to operate from right um, no and was it was it always received well by the teachers um you know there were certainly <laughs> teachers that just got it and certainly <laughs> teachers that just didn't and um 
And, and, you know, but that was going to be life for him yeah. anyway, right? So, you know, you're going to deal with people that are hard and you're not going to like them and they're not going to get you. So, you know, we just walked through it, you know, yeah. we just, and, and, and I don't think that, um, it's helpful for you to take away, you know, the, you don't, you don't want to be one of those moms that just kind of plows the way clear. You, you, they need to deal with the bumps in the yeah. road they need to um Absolutely. so we dealt with the bumps yeah yeah good point it's how that how people build character right is, is learning yeah. to struggle a bit um okay so tell us about ocd jacksonville and your work with them oh well um i had had this support group going for a couple years and then the president of ocd jacksonville frank morelli called me one day and I don't remember how he heard about me, but we met in Starbucks and he kind of basically interviewed me on my OCD knowledge. And, and next thing I know, they asked me to join the board nice. and, um, and it's been great. You know, it's, it were a relatively small board, but we're one of the oldest affiliates, um, for the IOCDF. And, um, we, you know, we love to do programming for sufferers and clinicians. And I think that, you know, we're really moving forward and, you know, gaining some great traction, growing like crazy. And, you know, it's a bunch of people that just care about helping. Nobody's paid. Everybody volunteers mm -hmm. and everybody's in the game. And it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'll put links in the show notes to anyone who's in uh, the Jacksonville area and they can find out more about it. Um, what sort of areas does it serve? Is it just We Jackson? serve, uh, okay, so we serve basically um, from Orlando north and over to the Panhandle. Okay. So there, we're OCD um, Jacksonville, but we basically serve the top half of the state. Okay, <laughs> cool. All right, brilliant. Um, and so, as part of this, then you've you've teamed up with Natural Life, which is a clothing brand in the states, I believe. Well, it's not just a clothing brand; it's a they they call themselves a lifestyle brand because okay. there's everything. But um, I do all the social media for OCB Jacksonville, and you know, I was sitting at, at my table one day trying to post some encouragement. Um, to the OCD sufferers, just nice little sayings like you see on social media. Mm -hmm. And I thought of Natural Life. And Natural Life is a national brand. I think they're in like 6,000 retailers nationwide, mm -hmm. but they're, they were born in Jacksonville and the headquarters is still in Jacksonville. And the, um, the owner and CEO of the company, Patty Hughes, um, is a friend so we know socially um and we certainly i knew from having kids in the same school and everything that she had a heart for this and so i put together kind of a you know for lack of a better term a powerpoint presentation and i called her up and i said would you come to my house for coffee <laughs> i have an idea and i sat down and i said I think you should do a line dedicated, uh, you know, to um, educate and empower and reduce the stigma of anxiety disorders. And then you can give OCD Jacksonville a, a portion of the proceeds. And wouldn't that be awesome? And she was just like, immediately, she's like, that's amazing. Yes. And that very morning, I, I showed her a bunch of ideas and it got started and Fearless launched, um, I guess, a year and a half ago. It went crazy. People loved it. I think the people at Natural Life are amazing because um, they have a heart for this that's genuine. It's not about business or anything else. They really love the give back to it and what they're enabling us to do. We just had um, Shala Nicely come um, do a talk on the Fred book. Yeah. Um, for OCD week and you know we're able to do some things that we weren't able to do because we have the funds from fearless coming in so um they just added uh this second year a few more items we've got some new t-shirts coming out in February and then another line um September of 19 so it's it's turned into this amazing beautiful thing that I couldn't be more excited about yeah, no, absolutely. And the, the products are awesome. Um, 
there's definitely some stuff for guys, but there's a lot for women as well. So both both genders are covered. Um, and I think there's a bit bit for everyone. And I'm trying to, on the back of my laptop, I wanted to put it down, but then you wouldn't be able to see me. Uh, I might, it's covered in uh, the Fearless stickers. Oh, uh, wonderful. Various inspirational quotes. I've got one of the, the camping style mugs. Oh, is it okay. life outside your comfort zone is yes. i can't remember yeah. it but it, great things don't come from comfort zone that's it yeah so that always picks me up when i when i drink from that and thanks to you um i ran a competition for my for my listeners uh, yes it. and thank you for that and actually you inspired natural life to do the same for ocd awareness week oh, and wow. so they <laughs> ran a competition similar to yours and they gave away 15 boxes that's of awesome. um, fearless items um, so that was amazing. No, you know, great to hear. beautiful the community joining together can make things. It's Absolutely. incredible. Yeah, no, that's awesome to hear. And um, yeah. so I guess how can people, obviously I'll put the link in the show notes, but you know, how, how can they find out more about the Fearless range? So um, the Fearless um, product line, one of the great things that we did also is on the back of every product or on the label, there's a, a link that takes you to a resource page. So, you know, even if you just buy a $2 um, pack of stickers or something, you can, um, you know, find the link to the resource page and get some entry level help. Um, so that's a beautiful thing about the line. Um, but basically it's naturallife/fearless.com and you can find the whole line on um, the website or it's in retailers nationwide. Just look for it. Mm-hmm. Um, Francesca in, um, is a popular one. I, I don't know, you know, depending on the regional area of your listeners, but um, it's around. It's around. Yeah. No, I see. And uh, yeah, as you say, like the the website um, and uh, I believe in the package as well refers to the, 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 the motivation behind it and the work. And right. uh, yeah, no CD Jackson. Yeah. There. Yeah, it didn't. It you just didn't want it to be a one and done. Here's a mug, you know, go about your business. I yeah. wanted it to actually be something that that helped reduce the stigma. If you're wearing a T-shirt that says "Don't believe everything you think," I'm telling you, I've worn mine a million times, and people without OCD get that. <laughs> you yeah. know, we all have intrusive thoughts. Yeah. So, and and my favorite thing is I've got a. Um, one of the things I felt most strongly about was something for the families or something for the moms in particular. And the mug that says a worried mom does better yeah. research than the FBI has been a bestseller. And of course, all my parents love it because they can identify. That's what you have to do. You have to dig in and dig deep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that mug. Um, I was actually going to mention that. So it's funny you did. Um, yeah. Then like you said, there's, there's various quotes, uh, uh, on the, the various um, products right. and clothing, and yeah, there's, there's something for everyone. Um, I've even got the uh, the air freshener in my car. Oh, wonderful! Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, okay, so um, is there a favorite resource that you've come across around OCD? Um, like you know, a favorite book or podcast you know, or anything? I, I tell everybody to listen to the OCD stories. Yeah, Honestly, you. it's so great because you've, you've, you know, got just about everybody in the who's who and OCD on your show and talking about the various spectrums. And it's, it's a, it's a beautiful resource, which you've created. Um, I think that there's, there's lots of good books. It depends on if you're dealing with a kid or an adult. Um, Mm. again, I like to, um, send people to, yeah, you, know, um, you know, a lot of the teenagers love like treat my OCD and the the apps, the downloadable yeah. apps. I think they find that wonderful when you know the older people just you know won't have it at all. So um, it just depends. It depends on the demographic um, that you're mm-hmm. dealing with, um, where I lead them. But for sure, you know, all the good websites, you know, IOCDF. Everybody should go to IOCDF. You know, and and you know, the bookstore there, the, the articles, everything is, is, you know, pretty much um, outlined there that you can at least start your journey through um, OCD and the area that you're struggling with, whether it's, you know, excoriation or the telomanias or, you know, any of the BFRBs or whatever, you know, you can find it. Yeah. 
Yeah, good point. Um, and yeah, thank you for your kind words. Um, okay, so general question now then is, I guess we'd yeah we'd, we'd stick with the, the the family. Is what would you tell the family who are just kind of starting this journey of OCD, other than ERP, because we covered that. Um, what what would be the next thing that you'd share with them? Well, one of the um, the sayings on um, the natural life products is uh, a famous Winston Churchill quote um, about how to win World War II, and that's never, never, never give up. Yeah. And I think that's the way you have to think of it, um, because there's going to be dark days and there's going to be hills and valleys. And, but if you know that the way to win the war is to just dig deep and keep going, um, I think you're more emotionally prepared to walk it out. Um, so I, 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 I very much think the thing that I think second to ERP is don't give up, don't panic and don't give up. Mm. Yeah. Good advice. Um, okay. So you've got a billboard in Jacksonville. Um, what would you want written on that billboard for everyone to see? Oh, that's really <laughs> terrible. That's the um, toughest question. That is the toughest question. Um, well, one of the um, the things that I hope we're going to be adding um, to the Natural Life brand is there's a, an image and it's a little tiny circle that says your comfort zone, and then a great big circle that says outside of that circle that says where the magic happens. Mm. And so where the magic happens is outside your comfort zone. So I would love that great big illustration that where you're comfortable is very small, but where the magic happens in your life is outside of that. Yeah. So that would probably resonate with everybody. Yeah. No, yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it would. Um, yeah, whether it, whether you have OCD or not, I think humans tend to kind of stick into that little comfort zone too much sometimes. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of why I started doing all of this. You know, what's going to be healthy for me? Just sitting at home and feeling sorry for myself, but it was safe and quiet here or to just get out and getting out helps every time. It just does. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so another kind of maybe tough question or odd question yeah. is uh, <laughs> uh, if you could pick up the phone and call your 20-year-old self, what would you tell that, Kim? Uh, you know, I've thought a lot of times that I would tell her to become um, an ERP therapist, mm. but that wouldn't work because, you know, my journey has been um, very rich and I've done amazing things and had a great life um, along with the hills and valleys everybody else has yeah. and I learned from every one of them. So I... I think I just tell my 20 year old self um, the second Winston Churchill quote, and that's if you're going through hell, keep going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, not that I'm this Winston Churchill aficionado or anything, but <laughs> he's got some good quotes. He did yeah. have, yeah, he did have. Is there anything else that you wanted to share or you wish you could have said that I haven't asked you? No, I just, uh, I really encourage parents to seek out other parents and to remember that um, not to be ashamed of your kid or your loved one that has OCD. It's okay. I see a lot of families that don't want anybody to know. And that's not helpful because, you know, that, that, um, that expression, it takes a village. It does. And the village is rich and beautiful and you learn different things from different people and to just put yourself out there in the community that can help um, with no shame. I, that's what I would, uh, that's what I would encourage. Yes. Yeah. There's no shame in this. Absolutely. It's not. Just part of the journey. Yeah. Very true. Cool. No, good way to end. And uh, thank you for your time, Kim, and for your dedication both to your son, the community, and obviously doing this fearless range. I think it's inspiring.
Oh, thank you. And I just um, hope everybody will at least check out the beautiful Fearless product coming out. It, it, we've worked hard on it, and I think it's um, going to be a great thing. Thank you so much for sharing it. No, it's my pleasure. Hey guys, so there you have it. I will put all the uh, links to the Natural Life Fearless range, uh, OCD Jacksonville and everything else um, for the show notes of this episode at theocdstories.com. That's theocdstories.com forward slash podcast. And quick disclaimer, guys, this podcast is not therapy. It is not a placement for therapy. Please seek treatment from a trained professional. Until we speak, take care.